Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to my channel, Evermind Oracle. I'm finally doing it after all this time. Managed to work up the courage to put my face on the camera. <laughs> so here we go. Um, first of all, just a huge, massive, enormous, giant, galactic size. Thank you to everyone who has tuned into my videos um, up until now. It I can't thank you enough. I don't even know if I can express how much it means to me. So just sending <laughs> sending that out there. And also a big shout out and welcome to all of the people who are hearing my voice for the first time. I know that most of the people who ultimately watch this particular video are going to be new people because I can see you all like Googling star seeds and star seed awakening and trying to figure out all this weird stuff and finding your way mysteriously to this video. <laughs> so I want to share a little bit about my story and how I woke up and how I got to where I'm at now. Um, because when I was going through the awakening process, I was so confused and mind blown. And it was so weird that the only thing that really helped me keep it together was watching a few of the videos that I could find of other people sharing their experiences. It just, you know, let me know that I wasn't completely insane and that other people were also <laughs> going through the same thing. So um, adding, just adding my experience to the mix, basically. And let me think. I actually want to start with my very first memory <laughs> because, well, I guess you'll see. Essentially, I was like a baby. I was, you know, maybe a year old or something. I had been put down for a nap in a playpen in a really creepy bedroom at my grandparents' house, actually. Creepy because my grandma has like a hundred porcelain dolls and they were all like staring at me. So w weird place to have your first memory. But I remember I woke up by slamming, like slamming into my body. And I wasn't really thinking thoughts in English because I was too young to talk, but I had lots of feelings. And if I were to translate those feelings into English now, they would go something like, holy shit. What the hell's going on? Am I a human? How can I be a human? Am I on earth? What's going on? Oh my God. <laughs> and just generally like freaking out and kind of losing it, right? And I, I ended up, you know, as I grew up letting go of, of that, like I always remembered that memory, but I let go of that idea of, you know, waking up on earth, right? I ended up being fully conditioned, being fully believing, you know, that I am just a body, right? Um, and, but that memory became really important to me when I started waking up because I started thinking back to my very, very first memory of being it, like in this body. And it was one of being surprised to find out that I was alive in a human body on earth, which, you know, very interesting. So, and that feeling of, you know, being an alien, of being 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 surprised to be a human w has really characterized most of my experience in life. Um, you know, for example, when I was in kindergarten, I wanted to play with the blocks. This is a very like potent memory for me. I wanted to play with the blocks. They were in the corner, but all the other kids are playing with the blocks and I didn't know how to involve myself. I Cause I, I would look around at all the other little kids and go, they're weird little human things. Like, what do they have to do with me? I'm not like them, right? I'm, I'm something different. I am not like them. I don't know how to interact with them. I don't know. They're completely unpredictable to me. I saw the other children as like chaos, right? I didn't know how to, to deal with them. So I would stand there in the kindergarten classroom and watch them play with the blocks. And I would just watch them and study them and go, hmm, that's how humans work, right? <laughs> and um, the only thing I ever wanted to do in kindergarten was go to like the art section where I would go and make little aliens. <laughs> okay. uh, I remember very clearly making an alien and I was so proud of it and I felt like it was so important. Um, you know, I didn't have any specific thoughts or memories or anything as a kid. I didn't have any memories from other lives. I didn't have any psychic abilities active. Um, I didn't really know that I didn't even really believe in aliens because I was raised Christian. Um, and you know, I wasn't, wasn't allowed to believe in aliens, right? <laughs> but it, still those feelings were there and I can see them woven throughout my childhood experience. And, you know, uh, but in terms of like psychic experiences, I don't know if this really counts as one, but I did see, I used to see tiny little people, like tiny little people. I would call them, I called them gnomes. They were just my friends. 
Um, there were two of them. One was like a little young guy and one was a little old guy and they wore like little tiny red outfits with little green hats. And one of them had a green hat, one of them had a red hat. And they would um, hang out on my grandparents' staircase and I would sit around and I would wait for them. And I, they would show up and then they would be like, hi. And I would put my giant eyeball right up to their tiny selves and be like, hi. And I just knew that they were my friends. And I knew that they were real and I would tell people about them and my parents obviously just assumed that, you know, I had a uh, really over vivid imagination, which was true. I, <laughs> I definitely had a very active imagination as a kid, but as I grew older, I, st I, remember the, I remember the day I gave up on my little gnome friends. Um, they stopped visiting me and I started to think, oh, I was just a little kid. I was just imagining things. None of that was real. And that was a really kind of sad turning point for me because it's when I really turned my back on everything magical and interesting and mysterious and I just became, you know, miserable basically. Um, but my childhood was mostly characterized by, you know, hating every second of going to school, being bullied um, all the time, like every day. <laughs> and uh, eventually, like, you know, mental illness, like I had... I've been diagnosed with like ADD, ADHD, bipolar disorder, all of it. And so from the time I was like five years old all the way until I was like 30, <laughs> um, you know, I entered that phase of, you know, social conditioning where I was just miserable, right? I mean, my, my story about mental illness is a whole different video, so I don't want to talk too much about that here. But... I guess we will fast forward all the way. We'll skip through all of that because who cares about any of that? <laughs> Let's fast forward all the way to when I was 30 and I started to miss my childhood self. I, I would think of little shy, right? I'd be like little shy. She was so cute and she was so imaginative and she had all those interesting experiences. And I started to remember the little gnome people. <laughs> and I was like, I wonder if, I wonder if there's really like fairies, you know, could, could I, could I see fairies? And of course, all of this was really kind of traumatic for me, actually trying to think about the, even the, the idea of turning my intuition back on, turning my imagination back on was traumatic for me because I had become really left-brained, like really, really left-brained. I was like a, um, an atheist by this point. I had been raised Christian by my grandparents. I mean, my parents raised me, but my grandparents were mostly responsible for my religious upbringing. But, um, you know, when I went off to university and learned more about world, different world religions, um, I left, you know, left religion behind me and became an atheist. And I was a really, really like skeptical atheist. I was really into debunking things and I had become entirely left-brained. I never trusted my own experience. I never um, would believe anything unless there was, you know, piles and piles and piles and piles of scientific proof. I'd become entirely rational, entirely logical. And for a long time, I liked that. But it all started to turn for me. When my awakening experience really started, like when I was about 30, um, maybe like 29, 30, kind of like that, um, I, I just... I got bored and I started to feel like something was missing and uh, <laughs> I wanted to start doing things that were silly. I wanted to start doing things that were rational. I wanted to start tuning into my intuition. I wanted to start, I was like, is intuition real? <laughs> you know, I wasn't even thinking about like psychic and, and stuff, right? I was just thinking about intuition and I just wanted to open up my intuition and explore and get more in tune with my, my little like childhood self. And that's how it all started. And it, so for about a year, it wasn't really an awakening, but it was like the preamble to my awakening where I started like looking up stuff about tarot cards. You know, as you can see, I've got lots of tarot cards <laughs> all stacked up there. And I remembered that as I was a kid, I was always interested in tarot and I was always interested in astrology. But of course, logical, rational, shy was not allowed to be interested <laughs> in tarot cards or astrology. But I started reading about these things. And it was funny because I was reading about them in a private browsing window. I was so afraid of other people finding out that I was doing things that were irrational because shy was, everybody knows that shy is logical. Shy is rational. Shy is scientific. That was like the thing I had built up around myself. And that was a big part of my identity. So entertaining something like tarot cards or astrology was 
massively damaging to my own identity, my own sense of identity and hugely traumatic. <laughs> I never wanted anybody to find out that I was Googling such things because of course I was worried about, you know, their reaction. And so that went on for about a year of me just kind of exploring and I started watching things like Ancient Aliens. <laughs> you know, I started watching like weird, weird uh, TV shows like that, um, just kind of absorbing, absorbing everything and getting into it and thinking about it. And eventually I got to the point where I was like, okay, I need to buy a deck of tarot cards. And I ended up on a complete whim because I was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to use my intuition. I'm going to follow my intuition. I'm going to order this deck of cards. And I picked the Star Child Tarot by Danielle Noel. And it was, it took a long time for it to get shipped. It ended up taking like three months and it had to be international shipping. And eventually it showed up on my doorstep on in 2019 on the full moon in Sagittarius. So that is almost almost two years ago from, from now. I'm filming this in April of 2021. And that would have been like one year and 11 months ago, approximately. I don't remember the dates, but I do remember it was the full moon in Sagittarius because I was just getting curious about astrology. So I was n noting things that happen on full moons basically. And that deck showed up and I didn't know anything about it. I just opened it up and I saw that the fool card wasn't the fool card. It was called the star seed. The star seed and I was like hmm what's a star seed <laughs> so I go and you know I google <laughs> I type in star seed and I am shocked <laughs> absolutely shocked to discover that there are people who believe they are aliens <laughs> you know there are people who um, feel that they had past lives and that some of their past lives were on other planets and of course left brain is all like that's completely insane these people are delusional you know they're they're psychotic they they need to take medication and you know they need help and but but my right brain was like wait a second this is the most interesting thing i have ever thought about or come across or anything i was super into it and i couldn't stop reading about it and a couple hours later i find myself on a YouTube channel. It's called Starseed Energetics. Um, you know, the girl who does it, her name is Ashtara. And <laughs> wow. Okay. As soon as I saw her and heard her voice and she was just doing like a tarot reading, I think I clicked on one for Syrian starseeds. Um, because when I was a kid, I always really liked the star Sirius and I would always look up for it and, you know, think about it. I was, I felt attracted to it. So I clicked on that and I don't think I ever really heard anything she said, but I just remember staring at her and this cold wave of like knowing like washed down, like voo, 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 voo. and I had this like really just intense knowing. I was like downloading all at once. Suddenly I, I just, I just knew, I knew that as insane and in crazy and impossible as any of this sounded, I knew that it was real. Like I, I knew, I knew I was like, Oh my God, how did I forget? <laughs> how did I forget who I was? How did I forget that I had a soul? How did I forget that I had lived lives on other planets? Right? How did, how did I forget? How did I have complete amnesia? It like blew my mind. And I remember I just started crying, like bawling my eyes out for, for three days straight, I just sat and cried because this was so overwhelming. And that began my six month long period of what I called the mind blown phase of spiritual awakening or starseed awakening because it was such a, a impossible shift in my own sense of self, such an impossible shift in my sense of reality. And it was like I didn't it was like I was remembering who I was, but that meant that I didn't know who I was anymore, right? Because all of the things that used to be me, like being rational, being scientific, you know, being skeptical, suddenly none of that applied anymore. And I didn't know how to deal with that. And I, I was in like basically a state of complete shock for like six months. And yeah. <laughs> Um, and in that six months I had, I, I would just sit around. I would just sit and stare at the wall for hours and hours and hours. I was meditating a lot. I was like learning to meditate for the first time. And it's really funny because I learned to meditate uh, by using the waking up app, which is made by Sam Harris, who is infamously one of the four horsemen of atheism. So very interesting that 
because I always loved his writings, right? As a, when I was an atheist, and I still do. I still follow him. I still think he's great, <laughs> and I always loved his work and and respected him as an atheist. And but then he actually his his meditation app led me through my spiritual awakening, which is very funny. <laughs> so, um, and within a couple of weeks of meditating, and I started having like really like out of body experiences. One where I saw this like glowing ball of light and I said, yes, I would like to go into the light. And then I went through a quantum tunnel and then I poofed out of, ex out of existence. You know, I lost consciousness. And then a while later I slammed back into my body. And I remember like gasping for breath, like gasping for breath. And like my heart was thudding as if it hadn't been beating and my body was ice cold. Like I got to wonder if I had, like my body had like stopped, you know, while I was gone. Right. Um, and I, I, and I know that that was so, that was a really significant moment for me because that was when I was healed of basically almost all of my mental illness problems. Like my mental health had like a drastic, huge, massive shift after that. I feel like I had to get to my moment of awakening in order to receive that kind of healing and that transformation. And that really helped me because I was worried for the longest time that I was just like literally delusional because of course I had been bipolar and you know with bipolar comes delusions and hallucinations so I had to think like is it is this it have I totally gone off the deep end do I need to go check myself into like the psychiatric ward like am I totally nuts and I was taking antipsychotics at the time um you know, and I had a history of like really severe mania. So I knew that there was a chance that I was just entirely nuts. Um, but what I learned is that there's a difference between like, between, there's a difference between psychosis and legitimate spiritual experiences. And it's really hard to quantify the difference, but there's a difference in feeling, right? Crazy feels crazy, but spiritual feels aligned, right? Um, so that helped me. But then also the fact that I, had such a massive turnaround in my in my health basically proved to me that this was something I should continue exploring. I was like, okay, even if even if this is crazy, if my life is improving, if you know, I went off all of my medication and I went off my medication and didn't become manic and didn't become depressed, right? I was like and I was stable. I was stable for the first time in my life. I was off meds and stable for the first time in my life and my life on every level was improving. I ended up like suddenly we started making more money. Suddenly we were able to move into a much better place. Literally every area of my life started to improve. That was such a huge confirmation for me because I was like, okay, even if I'm crazy, I should keep exploring this. I should keep going down this road because it is literally improving my life in every way. Right? <laughs> so that was a huge help. Um, let's see. Yeah. Other things that happened early in my awakening were that, that, that helped me like integrate all of this was, this one's kind of funny, but it, it was a big deal. Um, <laughs> this was a big moment for me. It was a couple of months maybe after my initial, like I'm a star seed kind of download. I was still questioning. I was really hung up on this idea of having a soul because I had been an atheist, right? I was like, that's just, I just can't wrap my head around this idea of having a soul. That's, that's just too crazy. <laughs> um, but okay. I was having sex with my husband on the couch and there's something about this couch that I will explain after, but I remember it was so good that I had an out of body experience and like connected with higher realms. And I remember saying to him after that just convinced me that I have a soul. <laughs> so <laughs> I, 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 I like, maybe that's too much information, but it has to be included as part of the story because that was such a moment for me. Right. Um, re like really understanding, having an experience of having a soul <laughs> and, the thing about that couch was it was actually sitting in the middle of a ley line. Okay. There was a couple of times where I had been sleeping on that couch. Um, when I had been home alone, my husband was uh, driving a truck at the time. So he was away a lot. Um, this is while I was going through my awakening experience. I was home alone all the time and I would wake up in the night and see this bright green. Sometimes it was bright green. Sometimes it was bright violet grid line intersecting the couch. And all kinds of weird things happened to me when I was asleep on that couch <laughs> because there was a grid line going through the couch, right? There was a ley line. And I know, I understand now that I had to live in that weird, horrible place. It wasn't, wasn't a nice place to live in, <laughs> but we had to live there because there was literally a grid line running over my couch. And that was important for 
yeah, important for my awakening experience. And I was actually sitting on that couch, sitting in that ley line, when the next really cool thing happened was I had a very, very visceral download of remembering a completely different life. And it was like immersive. I could see it, I could feel it, I, I was in it. Um, but it wasn't any normal type of life. It wasn't like a human past life. I was literally water, <laughs> okay? I was literally water and I was more than that. I was part of a collective consciousness. So I was water on an alien world and I could hear and feel and like sense and perceive all of my sisters. We were all one collective consciousness, but we each had our own little bits of awareness. We were still individuals, but all connected in this big like you know, we were all just in the water, but it felt like on an energetic level, we were part of this like big disco ball <laughs> of, of little like consciousnesses making up a greater consciousness. And, you know, every time one of us had a thought, we all thought it. Every time one of us had a feeling, we all felt it, but we could all like experience things and then ping those experiences out through the collective. And, you know, and the, the experience was so incredible because it was just euphoric, like ecstatic, ecstatic, that Hadarian ecstatic frequency of love constantly all the time. That was my only experience. And remembering that, uh, I mean, again, for the longest time I was, I was doubting it, I was doubting it, I was doubting it. But re what really helped me ultimately understand how real that was, was when I started talking about that on YouTube. And then I had so many people show up and be like, oh my God, that resonates so much. And oh my God, like you described Hadar and that's also what I feel about Hadar. And I was like, wow, I wasn't even sure if that life was on Hadar, but now I'm absolutely sure, <laughs> absolutely sure. So thank you to everybody who helped me understand that. So yeah, so I remembered that past life. And then I started remembering past lives on earth. Um, like my most recent past life, I was, a, I was a guy, I was a surgeon in the early 20th century. And he started showing up in my dreams and he would just go like, you hoo you know, you hoo <laughs> to, to wake me up. And I, I could feel that he was really there. Like he was present, he was there. And every once in a while I would do something during the day. I would, I would like move in a certain way and it would flash me back to a memory from his life. And so he really started coming through and I ended up taking back and experiencing four more other, three, three more other past lives all in sequence, uh, sequence behind me. And that started to help me piece together the like trajectory that my soul had been going on for the last like thousand years or whatever. So that really helped me understand the difference between, you know, a dream experience that is just a dream and a experience of another being, another consciousness trying to communicate with you. There is a difference. And so when you feel that, you know, to anybody who's just waking up and has no idea, really pay attention because you can feel the difference and that difference is absolutely real. So let me think, what else is relevant here? I woke up, remembered I had a soul. I started remembering things from past lives. And yeah, all kinds of experiences in meditation. And then the big one, the big one that really was, it was such an experience so, so intense that it basically wiped out any lingering doubts in my mind was 2019, the solar eclipse that happened right around Christmas day. Um, I ended up having to go back to my family. They live about eight hours away, um, visiting my parents for Christmas. And the night of the solar eclipse, I was seeing a blue face, like a blue face. I would be lying in bed and I'd be seeing this blue face. And it was really very, very real, like eyes wide open, seeing this blue like shimmering shimmering shiny blue face and i could tell that there were these beings these blue beings checking up on me kind of going is she ready is she ready is she ready and i just kept kept still and i would say yes 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 i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready um really i wasn't ready <laughs> i was totally not ready for what was about to ha happen but um i was you know i was like yeah let's let's do it i don't know what's happening um and that went on for three days and i was really exhausted really tired really really kind of sick actually because their energy was so intense um and then on the third day, yeah, we drove to drive back home. So we had to cross the, the border from Canada where I'm from and to drive down to Seattle where my husband is from. And we stopped to visit his family and we went to see Star Wars, the, like the last Star Wars movie. Um, in the beginning of that movie, she is sitting there and she's saying, "Be." she's meditating and she says, be with me, be with me, be with me. 
that was another trigger thing for me, right? Like the word star seed was a trigger, was an activating word for me. And apparently also be with me was a triggering phrase. And hilariously enough, that came through a Star Wars movie, right? Um, and immediately when, when I saw that scene in the opening of the movie, I, be, I split and I was in two places at once. One sitting in the theater, you know, being me, just watching a movie. The other one, I was made of light. I was made of white light. I still, I was like a, a female figure made of light. I had a staff in one hand and I was floating in the void. What really struck me was that the void was not empty, right? The void was full of ether. The void was full of ether. And I understood the ether to be tiny little particles of consciousness, like invisible, the tiny, smallest possible fractals of consciousness. And I knew that I could use, use, I don't know, like I could just, I could create anything out of it just by using my intention. And I like merged with her. I could see through her eyes and she was seeing through my eyes because I understood her to be an aspect of my higher self. I'm like another one of my parallel selves, right? And that was just a really cool thing that kind of went on during the movie. But after the movie, we got out of the theater and we had to drive another five hours to get home and we had to drive over the Cascade Mountains. And as we were driving up the mountains and the sun was setting, I got really sick, like a third eye headache that I cannot even describe. It was so bad that making me like, I had, like, I had to throw up. We had to pull over <laughs> several times and I was in and out of consciousness. And by the time we got to the, the peak, the mountain peak, right? By the time we got to the, the peak, we, I was in and out of consciousness and I was also like out of my body. I was up on, I was seeing like blue spaceships up hovering above the mountains. And I was also seeing through her eyes, like out in the void, but she was coming down and I had no idea what was going on. It was, and it, it was really scary because the moments when I was awake in my physical body, like the car was dissolving, like par I could see everything was just turning into particles and everything was just dissolving. And, but I knew that she was trying to come down into our body. It was like a, sorry, I had to stop the video for a sec because my dog freaked out. <laughs> so what was I saying? Yeah, she was trying to come down into my body. And I remember I had to stop at a rest stop and I didn't know if I could get up off the toilet because the floor was dissolving all around me. Um, so I basically somehow I made it home and Oh, hello, kitty. You want to say hi? He's a kitty. He's a black kitty. Magical kitty. Yeah. Her name is Mishka. Yes, hello. You want to let me finish? I'm trying to finish this video. Hmm? Um, so anyway, somehow I made it home that night and, you know, finally stopped being sick. <laughs> um, what I understood that whole experience to be was I call it a soul braid experience because that's what it really felt like. And I had um, some other confirmation on that later too, because it was like an aspect of my higher self braiding down into my body. And I absolutely felt like more of myself after that. Like my life has never, <laughs> I've never been the same. I have been more of myself. I have been way like more empowered and able to to just continue to, to expand and evolve on every level because I became more, you know, I had more of myself here inside of me. So after that, it was actually three days later, three days later, I was able to, on January 1st, 2020, right? I was able to, I started up my business and I like, I felt the call. Like I felt like I had something to do. I felt like my soul family was out there and I didn't know how to find you guys. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, Put myself out there. I'm gonna put out some tarot tarot readings on YouTube and just like go fishing, right? I was just if I put myself out there, maybe somebody will find me. And I couldn't believe that it actually worked. <laughs> okay, I could not believe it when people started connecting with me and coming in, and just the incredible, resonant, like vibrational experiences of people coming in and connecting with me, and how we've all just activated each other, and it's amazing. And so for everybody who's you know watching my videos for the first time with this do know that I don't make, I don't, I don't put myself through this. Like it's not easy for me to make videos. This is not like a natural thing for me. <laughs> right. Um, I don't put myself through this just for random humans. Right. I only do this to connect with, to connect with you guys, to connect with my soul family. That's why I do it. So if you've been watching, watching me talk and getting like weird vibes, right. Going like, what is it about this girl? Like, I feel like I recognize her. Well, yeah. Yeah, you do. That's, that's normal. That's not a crazy thought whatsoever. And I've had that same experience, you know, with other, with other 
um, with other star seeds that I first saw on YouTube, you know, I, I sent that sense of connection, right? We're all connected. We all know each other. So it's entirely normal to have that experience that is not crazy. And also, you know, I've only really talked about a couple of things, a couple of experiences in this, in this video, but you are receiving so much more than just the information that I'm telling you, right? This is also an energetic transmission and you will be, you know, receiving codes like from me that I've collected, you know, transmitting them on to you. And in fact, if you want to like receive those consciously, you can say, yes, yes, I would like the codes, please. <laughs> you know, you always have to consent, obviously. Um, and you're just simply watching videos like this. Um, always, 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 this is only the interface for our minds on a higher level. This is our higher selves bringing us together. And we are, you know, we're connected, we're enmeshing, we're exchanging vibrations and that is why I am doing this experimental video and I think I'm probably gonna leave it at that because that takes me right up to when I started making videos and I have a lot more different things I could talk about but I will separate those out into separate different videos yeah there's a lot of different things I would like to share but this is my first foray my first attempt and I will leave it at that so thank you so much for listening to me <laughs> talk about this and I will see you all and I will see all of you guys later. Bye.